Hey everybody, um, welcome back. And today is September 26, 2023. And so we are on Proverbs 26 for our daily proverb reading. Proverb reading. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, once we get through this, we'll go through the commentary in my Bible. Again, for um, anybody that hasn't joined before, uh, I use the Life Application Study Bible. It's an NIV, NIV version. Uh, I've had it for quite some time. So I've had it since 2003. So, wow, 20 years. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and jump right in. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the backs of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. Sending a message by the hands of a fool is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. Like the useless legs of one who is lame is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like trying to stone in a sling is the giving of honor to a fool. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who wounds at random is one who hires a fool or any passerby. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. As a sluggard says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it back into his mouth. A sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears is someone who rushes into a quarrel, not their own. Like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. As charcoal to embers and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the innermost parts. Like a coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them. For seven abominations fill their heart. Their mouths may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruins. Okay, so let's go back and read through some commentary in my study Bible. So the first scripture talked about is 26.2. Uh, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. And I was curious about that one when I read it, so I'm glad that this one addresses that. Um, it says that an undeserved curse that does not come to rest basically means that it has no effect. So, like a fluttering sparrow, ha, sparrow, sparrow has no effect. Um, or a darting swallow has no effect. An undeserved curse does also not have any effect. So that's promising. Um, the next verse is 26, 4, and 5. So these ones do seem to contradict each other. Uh, do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. So let's see what this says. 
Uh, these two verses seem to con seem to be in contradiction, but the writer is saying that we shouldn't take a foolish person seriously and try to reason with his or her empty arguments. This will only make him or her proud and determined to win the argument. In some situations, you ought not even try to answer a fool, for there is no way you can penetrate his or her closed mind. You may, in fact, be stooping to that person's level if you do choose to answer. Such a fool will abuse, uh, abuse you, and you will be tempted to abuse him or her in return. There are other situations where your common sense tells you to answer in order to expose the fool's pride and folly. So the next verse is 26, 7. Like the, useless, like the useless legs of one who is lame is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. And this says, in the mouth of a fool, a proverb becomes as useless as a paralyzed leg. Some people are so blind that they won't get much wisdom from the reading from reading these proverbs. Only those who want to be wise have the receptive attitude needed to make the most of them. If we want to learn from God, he will respond and pour out his heart to us. 26.8 Like tying a stone in a sling is the giving of honor to a fool. Sometimes when someone um, in a group causes disorder or dissension, the leader tries to make him loyal and productive by giving him a place of privilege or responsibility. This usually doesn't work. In fact, it's like tying the stone to the sling. It doesn't go anywhere and it will swing back and hurt you. Uh, the dissenter's new power may be just what he needs to manipulate the group. So like the useless legs of one who is slain, or like a stone, uh, like, like tying a stone in a sling is the giving of honor to a fool. Okay, so I have seen that like in, um, probably in the workplace and even in school where um, somebody, a boss or a teacher attempts to uh, give somebody that is just acting a fool some level of responsibility or authority for sure, I've definitely seen that. Can't think of specific situations of where it's worked or where it hasn't worked, um, but that definitely makes sense. Seems to make sense. It's the word of God, so it's the truth, regardless of if it makes sense to me or not, I guess, right? Um, the next scripture is 26 9. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. And it says here, Normally the first prick of a thorn alerts us, so we remove the thorn be before it, it damages us. A drunk person, however, uh, may not feel the thorn, and so it will work its way into the flesh. Similarly, a fool may not feel the sting of a proverb because he does not see uh, where it touches his life. Instead of, of taking its point to heart, a fool will apply it to his church, his employer, his spouse, or whomever he is rebelling against. The next time you find yourself saying, so-and-so should really pay attention to that, stop and ask yourself, is there a message in it for me? I think that is valuable and so true because oftentimes sitting in church or listening to a message, there's definitely oftentimes where I feel like, oh, this message you know, applies to so-and-so and they should hear this message. And sometimes it's from a positive perspective, but sometimes it's from a critical perspective. And I think that lots of people do that. I try not to, but I do. I have. 26, 13, and 16. Uh, let's, let's scroll down here. A sluggard says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a slugger turns on his bed, and a slugger buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. So some of these scriptures, like that one, particularly, uh, particularly where he buries his hand in the dish, um, I do feel like we have read that in another proverb as well. I, there's a few in here that I feel like we have read um, in some of our past days, so... Um, 
This says here, if a person is not willing to work, he or she can find endless excuses to avoid it. But laziness is more dangerous than a prowling lion. The less you do, the less you want to do. And the more useless you become. To overcome laziness, take a few small steps towards change. Set a concrete, realistic goal. Figure out the steps needed to reach it and follow those steps. Pray for strength and persistence to keep your excuses for to to keep your excuses for making you useless. Stop making useless excuses. Uh, the next scripture is twenty six seventeen. So this proverb, I guess, lots of the proverbs, but twenty six specifically, um, lots of focus on foolishness, fools, and laziness, and people that are lazy. So twenty six seventeen. Like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears is someone who rushes into a quarrel that's not their own. Uh, seizing the ears of a stray dog is a good way to get bitten, and uh, interfering in arguments is a good way to get hurt. Many times, both arguers will turn on the person who interferes. It's best to simply it's best simply to just keep out of arguments that are none of your business. If you must become involved, try and wait until the argue the arguers have stopped fighting and cooled off a bit. Then maybe you can help them mend their differences, and their relationship. 2620 is the next one. Without, without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Talking about every little irritation or piece of gossip only keeps the fires of anger going. Refusing to discuss them cuts, cuts the fuel line and makes the fires die out. Does anyone continually irritate you? Decide not to complain about that person and see if your irritation dies from lack of fuel. 26, uh, 24 through 26. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them, for seven ab abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. This proverb means that people with hate in their hearts may sound pleasant enough, but don't believe what they say. Okay, so that was just one quick line to describe all three of those, those scripture verses. Um, and that's all it says. So uh, 26. So Proverbs 26, 24 through 26, basically is just saying that uh, people with hate in their hearts may sound pleasant, but don't believe what they say. Alrighty, so that is the end of Proverbs 26. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight, and everybody have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.